Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And you can see we have a guest, Mr. Mott. We have, there's three of us. It's a threesome. All right, so let's talk about this. I know, I had to get you. Let's talk about who you are. Let's call the Baniacs who you are, how the heck you got here, what these wines are, and where we're going. Oh, my name is Strat Parrot. I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I gotta stop you right there. Strat. I mean, if my name was Strat Vaynerchuk, this show would be at least 30 times bigger. With a name like that, that would dominate. Uh, well, I mean, I, it's pretty crazy. I do the like whole Strat? personal branding thing. I like, I like uh, the name Strat. It's pretty, works pretty well. Do like girls like it? They're like, oh, Strat. Um, no, they're usually calling like, me oh, something Strat. weird. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Strat. No, yeah. Okay. They're like, oh, Strat, don't do that. Yeah. Okay, I hear you. Good job. <laughs> um, all right. Um, how, did you, how did your parents come up with Strat? Um, uh, my middle name is Strathmore, and it comes ah. from my middle name. I have a crazy name. It's Cecil Strathmore. Cecil? Parrot. How can you not accept, Morton? How can you not accept Cecil? Cecil is the name. Cecil, like Cecil Cooper? I mean, do you know who Cecil Cooper is? I, Old school yeah. brewer, right? Cecil Fielder? Mm -hmm. Dude, if you kept Cecil, you'd be a baseball player. I would be a baseball player, but I can't play baseball. So Understood. All right, know. go ahead, Strat. I'm sorry, um, I cut you off. Anyway, uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. He's timing out. No, that was T-Town. T-Town, uh, T-Town, T -town. whatever. Uh, Tennessee, Tennessee Titans, no good, no good. Um, and I work at a printing company doing graphic design for all kinds of people in the southeast that I can't really say who. Um, and we're going to talk about um, these three wines um, just based on their bottles and the designs of the labels and everything. Um, that's how we're going to rock it. That's how we're going to rock it. Tell them how you got here. Uh, the way I got here is I uh, followed Gary on Twitter and emailed him one day just with an idea about a show and said, hey, you should have a designer come on and talk about wine labels, label design and branding and how it affects consumer decisions and stuff. And uh, he said, awesome, if you can get to New York, uh, you can totally do it. So uh, I made it to New York, and I'm here. And uh, Thank you, dude. So Thanks for being here. All right. Social engineering. Social yeah, engineering, you like that. All right, so let's rock into these wines. Um, wh where's your wine scene right now? Just starting, you hate it, you love it, you care less, you're into it, you want to learn, you're an expert, where you at? Uh, I want to learn. I don't know a whole lot about wine How many wines have you had? Like three, seven, five thousand? Uh... Tell probably, the truth. Don't lie to the Vayner Nation. I have break probably only Don't had lie. four to five wines. That is phenomenal. Now, I know a lot of Vaniacs are going to be watching right now and be like, oh, you know, sometimes you have guests that are not as much into wine. Listen, when you pump out a show every day, five days a week, you got to mix it up, right? There's a lot of people that love design. There's a lot of you guys out there and gals, gals, that buy wine, buy the label. So having a graphic designer's point of view um, who's really passionate about design is kind of interesting. For example, this middle bottle is straight pimp. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, people need to buy this for 10 bones just cause. It almost reminds me of the old school Lancers bottles that everybody used to buy and have in their dorm rooms with their you know, lava lamps and you know, their rat posters. So, you know, this bottle alone is a $10 wine, is one of the sickest, this is a cool label. Bo I mean, cool. bottle, and a cool label. So, we'll get into that in a minute. But you know what's really fun? Strap picked out all the wines. So I had no influence, he just went downstairs while we were working um, and picked out the wines, so that's kind of fun. And he's picked out some interesting wines. He wants for some home run price points, I give you credit for that. You, you figured if I'm gonna taste it, let me ball a little bit, right? Tell yeah. Me, you, you, you went into that. Well, kinda, and I just picked, <laughs> I just picked a bunch that uh, I wasn't sure no, about. No, it was awesome, you did a great job. And really walked into a couple of very interesting wines. So ironically, what started out to be maybe an alternative show for Wine Library TV is walked into Especially these two wines. We're gonna learn a boatload about wine, my friends, on these two wines. And you know, and then the John Anthony, which we've had on the show multiple times. We've done the Sauvignon Blanc way back, maybe even before you, Mott, when it was EFK taping. I think we've done some other John Anthony wines in the show. So let's get into the vino right off the bat. And now I'm gonna change it because Mott always yells at me and says he wants the pretty faces. So this is the Nun, uh, the Vina Delas Taos 2005 vintage. Um, it is actually on the customer appreciation sale right now, which is ironic. So the price is actually 49 US bones instead of like 50 something like that. 91 points, uh, Josh Reynolds, who's a great critic. Let's give a little rinse first. So rinse your glass a little bit. Don't be scared, grab. That's all right, that's all right, see? That's, that's not bad at all. All right, now challenge me, come on. See if you can step up to this. Not bad, not bad at all. Very good work. Chatara's impressed. You might be able to get a little action later. All right, let's see what else is going on here. Get into the first one. Now, 
this is a very interesting story. First of all, the winemaker of the nun is none other than, take that mod, none other than Esther Nin, um, who is an unbelievable winemaker. The assistant winemaker at Clo Rasmus, which, which easily right now is the hottest wine at a Priorat um, in, um, in uh, all of Spain. Just wanna make sure, one thing on this, because I don't wanna give you the wrong information. It's, uh, is it Pinades? Yep. Um, um, she is uh, an unbelievable winemaker who, in my opinion, has a lot to do with Clo Rasmus' success. She's a big, big factor there. And she's the winemaker here. This wine is, as you can see, a white wine made from 100% Cirello. That's X-A-R-E-L. And an E-L-O. Cirello. So, as having your sixth wine ever being 100% Cirello, that makes you straight wine pimp. That's a very good thing. As a matter of fact, you may want, yeah, there you go. I mean, this is a very good situation for you, Strat, because you know, maybe you haven't had a lot of wines, but now your new move is gonna be this. Hey, have you had any Cirello? And people are like, oh, you know your stuff. So remember that. Anyway, remember, it's, yeah, it starts with an X. Um, so it's 100% Cirello, made by one of the best winemakers in the world. Let's talk about, let me let you do your thing. Label time, go ahead, hold it up, mod, zoom it in, do your thing. Bring it down. Okay. There's um, a lot of designers, color lovers, a lot of big people out there that are big fans of the show that are in the tech and design field, so it's interesting. Well, I chose this um, wine label because it had an interesting use of, um, of die cut, which a lot of labels you don't really see. Um, it has a raised font um, on, <laughs> on the label, and the color just jumped off the shelf. Most of the, uh, most of the other bottles that you see in the store are very plain. They're they're beiges and pastels. Uh, Gary's going crazy back here. Um, this label had not a lot of information on the front, um, so at first it doesn't really jump out at you and make you look to see what it is. But uh, it's got all the all the basic information just laid out for you on the back. Um, the it's a nice package. It, it is a nice package. The uh, the little shape that's cut out, I, I would assume, is a, is a grape. Um, it also carried over to the. I think it's a pebble top. I think it's thing. it's probably the vineyards have big stones to them, oh. and that's where I would go with more would, than a grape. Okay, I'll go. If with you look that. at it, it is a nice package. I agree. The bottle is nice and firm, solid punt, not too crazy, um, but it, this wine has a nice package and a nice package sells. So let's give this wine a whirl. But first, let's give it a snippy sniff. What are you picking up on the nose? Nothing is a wrong answer, so don't be scared. It's a tough nose, so don't don't worry, because most people can pick up. It's tough. Go ahead, whatever comes out of your mouth. Very very alcohol. I mean, it's <laughs> just alcohol. Yeah. No problem. All right, move it, Mop. I get a little bit of a rubber hose component. So yeah. smell. <laughs> I'll, go with the, I'll go with the rubber hose. I actually do get a very substantial rubber hose component on this nose, which is quite interesting. There's also a smokiness component, clearly. Almost like a uh, campfire component on the back end, which I like. There's also a very substantial amount of shriveled up pineapple. Now, follow me on this. It's a subtle pineapple grainy kind of thing going on. But the hose, the plastic, do you smell the plastic? It's like a big empty pole and springs bottle. It's, hit, it's hitting me in the back of my throat. Mm -hmm. so. No, that's my Bruce Lee chop. No, oh. I'm just <laughs> Yeah, a very fascinating nose. I like it quite a bit. I mean, this is a pretty pricey bottle of white wine, so you need to wrap your head around going for you know $49 Cirello, um, but a very big producer, very sought after winemaker involved, small production. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, it's a plastic. What do you think? Tell the truth, I didn't make it a cure less. Well, I, it's I a taste very a complicated really complicated wine. Yeah, I don't know. To I be taste your sixth a, wine ever. But go ahead. I taste uh, a lot of woodiness. I don't really know that it's very Good oaky. Point. I don't know that I'm getting an oak monster, but it <laughs> tastes it tastes like kind of hickory, really, I think. Um, I'm going to go with hickory. Good call. Here's what's happening. Very fascinating bottle of wine. 
really wish this was a lot less expensive because this is a wine that I would absolutely love for the Maynard Nation to go out there and try. Very good acid, almost like a lemon. I get like a nice, so start the foundation with a lemon kind of going into your mouth. But there's definitely that smokiness that I felt on the nose carrying over. So maybe that hickory Agreed. smokiness thing is what you're picking up on. There's definitely smokiness. Almost to the degree that I would say that you're barbecuing lemons. And that you've probably never done that, but you cut lemons and just put them in barbecue. Maybe you've done it when you've fooled around with fish, whole fish on the barbecue mot, you know, and the lemons are there and you kind of, if you've ever done that, I've done that a couple times because I found things that I thought would taste that way. I also continue with this plastic, metallic, minerally kind of thing going on. Kind of like, if we were littering in the 80s in, you know, in a field with a lot of minerals in it. I mean, you know, like, like, like uh, littering the beach is kind of how I go through it because it's shellfishy, kind of like shells and, and salt watery, mineral, uh, and then like this plastic component, which just makes me think of some people throwing around plastic bottles of wine. Like if we had a big litter problem right now in the US because everybody's drinking bottled water, all that plastic, you know, bottled water stuff all over the beach is what I'm getting. One thing that I think I overlooked that you might be picking up, apples and pears. I get a really significant apple pear blend. Like, remember Wuzzles? You might be a little young. Wuzzles, little two young. animals that came together as one. Mott, you're, you're probably a little too old. I'm probably in that wheelhouse, right? You weren't into Wuzzles, you weren't into Wuzzles. Fine. But Wuzzles, two animals in one. Half elephant, half butterfly. That's kind of what I'm seeing going on here. Half pear, half apple on the attack. So. An interesting wine for me. The sugar level is kind of a little bit high too. Do you get a little sweetness? Yeah, it's a little There's sweet. Just a tad, just a just inch, like a eh, like a eh. Cool. We have a scar in the same almost in the same place. <laughs> um a very complicated bottle of wine. You know, I'm kind of like going in a lot of different directions with this mod, wouldn't you say? It seems like it's probably pretty all over the place. I can't really even come up with things to describe it. I hear you. You design things. I, design, I break I down wine. Things pretty. You make them pretty. I make tasting notes pretty. Here's what I'm gonna tell you right now. I am <clears throat> feeling this wine. I like it a lot. It's very complex. I understand how this could be a little bit of a difficult wine. I mean, for an early wine in the wine drinking process, this is way, 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 way complicated. But a very complex, monstrous wine. If you're a Condru fan from the Rhone Valley, you're gonna kind of run with me on this. It's got a Condru kind of quality to it, which I find extremely fascinating, but has the minerality of like a Dunhoff Riesling. Makes sense? If you're hardcore wine, that's gonna really break down and really paint you the picture. I see sunsets and you know pears and apples, but I also see a little bit of that plastic and minerality component, which is very fascinating. One of the more complex, interesting white wines I've had on the show in a long time, maybe even ever, which is kind of ironic for a young drinker to put that in the mouth, it's gonna be complicated. I'm really feeling this wine. And if you're a serious wine drinker, I think this is something you need to seek out. I absolutely positively believe this wine will last for 12 to 15 years, which is a very long, substantial time for a white wine. I also am completely convinced that if you are a whole fish eater, if you're big into the Mediterranean cuisine, whole fish charred, that this is a passionate, productive, combination, I just want to use two peas. You know, very, very high in this wine. I'm gonna score this wine 94 points. I'm feeling it, and I'm feeling it hard. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think, it, would so, I I think it would be good with fish. I guarantee that like 15,000 people just laughed their ass off. Hey, yeah, I don't, I don't know what, uh, where the 94 Hey, you do stands. your design thing, I'll do my wine thing. You, you do that. Very nice, wow. By the way, big shout out to Debbie Erfer on her 56th Birthday, happy birthday, Debbie. Awesome, let's move on to one of the most interesting wines we've ever had, we're gonna rinse a little, on WLTV. Just rinse a little bit. Now, this, my friends, is from the Loire Valley. We talk a lot about Chinon and Bourgoy, but this is a little bit of a different animal. Got it? Mm -hmm. Very good. You can see the color, once you show them the color, I'll, get it, I'll let you get into the bottle in a second. This is the J. Marat, 2006, Fief Vedin, uh, Meriel, 2006, Collection, um, 10 US dollars. This is a blend of Pinot Noir, Cabernet Franc, and Negrette. And Negrette comes from the Mavro uh, rootstock, which was cultivated in Cyprus. 
in the island of Cyprus and was believed to be carried over to France in the 12th century. This is a very interesting grape varietal that's blended here with the Cap Franc and the Pinot Noir and I'm extremely ecstatic at the price point for a red Loire Valley experience. Pinot, Cap Franc and Negret. Very fascinated by this blend. Uh, Negret is found in this general area of the Loire Valley a little bit here and there and why don't you tell everybody out there why you picked the Marat um, as for its design labels, <laughs> skills, um, and bottle and what have you. Well I picked this one because it had an interesting bottle. It was different from uh, it's extremely from different. from the rest of the bottles that are that are in the store. Uh, apparently this- How'd you like the store by the way? I love the store. The store is huge and it is insane down there. <laughs> I don't know how much you've been down there today but customer appreciation day is a good thing apparently. Um, I picked this one just because the, I mean, one, I like the owls. Um, it was a different use of foil stamping and, uh, just a really interesting bottle. Very simple, uh, simple lines, uh, and the color just kind of jumped out again, uh, as opposed to all the other wines. They have, uh, another bottle of this that's yep. in a yellow. Um, both of those were in different areas and, uh, stood out a lot. Also, kind of just chose this one as a tribute to my grandmother because she liked owls. Nice, dude. Um. That was, see, <laughs> now you know what. Before I was like, ah, this guy. I'm not even sure, but now I love you, dude. That was good. Good for you. That's what it's all about. Family, my man. Family. Um, good job. Co collection. Um, look, I mean, it's a pretty limited good edition. name. <laughs> yeah, limited edition. Thought it might just kind of be special. You know, if I was going to a party and wanted to and pick out see, a wine, you saw that it was ten bones, right? You're yeah, like, oh, it was ten cool. bucks. It's like, oh, it's ten bucks. It looks special. Um, Maybe I would take that and people would think it was cool. Uh, the, the, just the bottle the stood bottle out a lot. Kills. I mean, the bottle's cool. Apparently, it's, uh, it's a regional bottle. Yep. Uh, that I don't know what the significance of it regionally would be. Uh, I do know that in Europe, you have a lot of bottles for beers and ales that are this shape. Yep. More so, they can't be so that they can't be grabbed and used as a weapon easily. Is the only reason why the uh, people get rowdy. Why the beer bottles are like that. People soccer get rowdy. Games. Sorry, football. And right. uh, people people collect labels. Yep. Some people collect yep. labels. I don't know. Yep. Um, I thought it would be a cool label to have I agree. in your this book. I pretty package. Um, be easy to uh, take make off. notes about, yep. take off. All right. Ten Bones. Remember, Loire Valley, which you know I'm very fascinated by. Interesting. I'm, try right? I'm trying to come up with the notes. Go ahead. There you go. <laughs> Pinot Noir, Cab Franc. Look at that. Let's get into this wine. All right. Right off the bat, you can see the color is very light. If you can see your fingers through it, you know Pinot Noir is in the house. Uh, maybe Beaujolais, other light grape varietals. So Gamay, which is the grape actually in Beaujolais. But anyway, very light in its color. Um, let's give this a sniffy sniff. What are you picking up on the nose? I'm getting, I'm getting magnolias. Okay. Like flowers. Okay, nice. Nice, actually. I actually get that too. That's a good job. Not the first thing that jumped at me. The first thing that's jumping out at me is bell peppers and a little jalapeno. Very green. Yeah, it, it does smell uh, right? green, like, like a green pepper. Yep. Very veg vegetable. Um, also, I get like a fertilizer, like dirt kind of thing going on. You know, like the ground. It's, you know, like yeah. really like, like fertile ground. Um, yeah, I mean, very green. I mean, this really is a vegetable stand on the nose. You get a lot of the, you know, Cucumber, asparagus, celery, um, Brussels sprout, cabbage, and then loaded on the back end of the nose with a spicy green pepper, maybe a little of that yellow pepper that I like so much. Uh, and then you get the red one, an orange one. There's all different colors, mine. Um, there's kind of like Skittles. And, uh, and a little bit of like a jalapeno pepper, a little spiciness on the back end, a little kick for the kids. All right, let's give it a whirl. Now, my guess is gonna be that you're not gonna love this so, so much because it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be pretty earthy and pretty intense, but maybe you like veggies and all that stuff. Do you like vegetables? I do like vegetables. Okay, so we got a chance. Let's give it a whirl. It's very dry. It is very dry. Dry in the palate. Anything else? Um, tastes like it smells. Tastes like it smells. Big so time. it doesn't really have a lot of flavor to. I mean, I don't really no, feel like it has a lot of flavor to it. It doesn't it's have nothing a lot of fruit. that just kicks you. It doesn't have a lot of fruit. Yeah. You know, it's not a fruit-driven wine. It's much more of a. It's a sour cranberry component. 
Like, you know when you eat, like, people think cranberry juice is, like, delicious. They don't realize how much sugar is added. You go on, like, you pick, like, you play with the cranberries and you taste them raw and they're, like, disgusting. You know? So I get a little bit of that disgust. Well, not disgusting. They're sour. They're not sweet. So sour cranberry is the, is the fruit involved. And then I get really heavy levels of lettuce, of green pepper, of very vegetal components. It's a medium-bodied wine. It's actually a little heavier, a little bit more intense than I thought. Good mid-palate, nice transition, long finish. Still tasting it. Kind of in my mouth, which I think is very impressive for a 10 bone bottle of wine. Um, this is a nice entry into the old world. For all you New World fans, if you want to jump and skip, I don't know if jump is J O M P, but jump and skip into the old world, this is a nice play. The problem is, I think this is going to be a very tough wine to find. This is a pretty allocatedly, you know, rare kind of wine. I'm, I'm, I actually haven't seen this store. I got to figure out what Ian did. He did a good job by bringing this in. I'm kind of into this wine. Um, I like it because it's my palate profile. Do you like it or is it just. I like it, but I feel like it would be better with with some type of food. Like, I don't know if it's a... Uh, it seems like maybe it's more of a meat. Maybe. The kid's a natural. Absolutely. This is a food wine. And, and I don't know what kind of food. I mean, I don't know if... I don't think I'm that it's necessarily... I'm high on maybe going uh, with Doritos on this. Doritos, yeah, no. Well, Can you wrap your head around that? You like some Doritos? Go with Doritos, yeah. Doritos, maybe. Believe it or not, I'm going to tell you what food I would absolutely pair this with. I'm gonna tell you flat out what I would pair this with. It just came to my mind. Like, it, I, I actually took myself away from the show and put myself a little bit more in my real life for a second there. It was kind of cool. I was like, mm-hmm. I like left. I would pair this with a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, that would be good. Well, I mean, I was thinking like some type of like red red meat anyway, yeah. steak or something yep. like that, and it that'd be a weird combination to go with. I think because I Philly like cheese steak, Philly cheesesteaks and I like putting peppers and mushrooms on it. And because I feel like the earthy tones here and the green peppers, I think that's maybe where I got to it. I would absolutely pair this. Pair this, man. Pair this with a $10 uh, Philly cheesesteak. So you get a $10 bottle of wine and $10 Philly cheesesteak because they, they roll heavy in those places. Be good for an outdoor grilling, like a party that you're grilling at. Maybe. I totally agree. Um, good party wine, $10 bottle of wine, looks classy. If you're able to find this, I absolutely recommend you do so and have it because I think it's a great entry level to the old world. I'm gonna score this wine 88 points. I think it's an absolute best buy. I think it's a definite go out and try. I think it absolutely expands your palate. This wine represents everything I believe in and I really, really hope that you guys have an opportunity to try this because it's a very unique, fun little wine that I think is extremely well made. A lot of times these blends are really just last of barrel bullshit. Uh, This is not that kind of effort. This is a real wine with a real focus and good wine making behind it because I like the transitions and I just think uh, a very good bottle of wine, I like it but very different, it's not for every palate. There is a boatload, a crap load, and a substantial amount of you out there that are gonna have no interest in this wine and say, what is, maybe this is your first episode watching, you go out and try this, you hate it so much you'll never watch me again. So understand, it's a beware, consumer beware, because it's a very vegetal green wine. Yeah. Now this is gonna be a totally different experience, my man. <laughs> this is the wine you're gonna like the best. Just, just prepping you up. But I'm not trying to, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe red wine, maybe you're not at the red wine phase yet. Are you in the I red like wine? red wine okay, better okay. than most white wines. Okay, so I think you'll be in a good place with this. I think the s- seductive flavors of a California Cabernet are always good, and definitely when I was first getting to wine at this age, I was all about this. This is John Anthony 2005 Napa Valley Cab, 50 U.S. bones, and uh, let's see why uh, you picked Michelle and John Anthony's uh, wine. Um, I picked Michelle and John Anthony's wine because it had... Uh, a different use of the paper stock on it. Um, it's very textured. I don't know if you can really pick that up on the camera at all there, Ma. Um, the the use of type, the typographic elements um, used to create the logo um, using John Anthony uh, as kind of a monogram uh, was just very interesting. Um, and it was a pretty pretty label. It jumped off at me um, and just looked classy. Uh, I didn't really choose it for any other reason other than I thought it looked pretty classy and I like topography. Um, and so I it's guess we're rad. gonna we're gonna check it out and see what Some it looks of the like. I mean, it's in this pretty, 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 with you. So, pretty solid. They're saying you're breaking it down. So, <laughs> fifty bones, John Anthony Cab, Napa Valley. That's right, Mott. You got me. You got me pissed. So I had to I had to ruffle you back. All right, let's see what's going on here. Great color, Mott, zoom in. Well, somebody's gonna have to move it. You know what, I'll move it. I'll be the bigger man in this relationship. All right, nice, nice color. Deep, really beautiful red, fluorescent colors around, you know, just bright raspberry red colors around the edges. 
Um, very, very pretty color. Let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. By far the most intense nose, right? Yeah. It definitely has a lot more singularity going on with it. I get dark chocolate shavings on the nose. Mott also agrees with me. Cherries. That's, yep, absolutely. This is a cherry. Absolute chocolate covered cherry uh, wine, no doubt. By the way, I hate chocolate covered cherries. Just felt like throwing that out there. But none of my wine. Very bright fruit, very raspberry jam. You know, like good homemade jam kind of flavors coming through on the nose. I like the nose, it's very fruity. A little, little over the top, a little star bright, starlight. Make my charm, you know, little, little fruity, little rainbow, little, you know, riding the My Little Pony on the Skittles rainbow, a little fruit bomby that way, um, but. Maybe some pomegranate going on. Yeah, nice call. A little su sweet, I don't bitter get it, but thing. I can see, yeah, no, I see where you're going, sweet, bitter. Like, I usually go to cranberry with that, but I see where you're going. Oh, Mott, let's link up the Hulu contest. The Hulu contest is going up. Mott, link that up. That's still going on. We're excited about that. If you don't know what that is, you want to get your free swag? Get your swag on. Do your thing. My mom watches Hulu. Nice. <laughs> Hulu's awesome. Let's give it a whirl. Not dry, right? Not that dry, and uh, it's very woody. Again, yep. uh, again, back to the wood. Going with the oak monster. <laughs> ah, the oak monster is definitely in here, but not super bad. Not a super bad oak monster, man. You want some oak? There's some things out there, but definitely the oak monster comes through. Um, vanilla cedar box coming through, like a cedar, you know, cedar closet. Why do women like that? What? Because it doesn't like no moths come in and eat your furs, or what happens? Keeps them away. Keeps the moths away. That's what Keeps them away, right? Why? What do moths do? Because it's the smell. I know, but what do moths do? They eat your clothes? Moths eat, eat, eat cotton, cotton fabric and stuff. Got it. So, cedar closet going on in here. No doubt. Um, I, I get a little bit of a smokiness, uh, smoked sausage kind of thing going on. Since we're having a sausage fest here. Um, you know, it's just, oh, you know, I don't know. What do you, I mean, I, it's good. Oh, nice. It's nice. Good. Zoom in Again, on that. <laughs> I don't know if I like it. Is this, you like this or no? I don't like this. I actually like the other one better. better. This is too um, over the top for you? Too rich? Yeah, it's a little rich. I mean, I don't know. Do you know like milk you better than water? It. Yeah, actually. Okay, I well, then, then I would have thought you might have liked this because this does get kind of dairy, milky, heavy, heavy on the palate, but you're just not feeling the flavors. I think it would, yeah, I don't know. It might be dependent upon what I'm doing. I want to show you something pretty cool. And for all you people that are just starting to drink wine, you should try this as well. If you have a light wine like a Pinot and then you have a Cab, you're going to see something pretty damn cool. Taste this now. While I break this down. Keep an eye on him. Anyway, big fruit. Ah, definitely Oak Monster, Blackberry. Does it taste different a little bit? Yeah, it actually made it a little bit sweeter. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's amazing how different wines change it the gave the, It gave this one a lot more flavor, whereas the last time... We were saying that it was just really earthy and very green. Like, you're getting a little more fruit out of this one. Cool. Um, because that one's so I'm a, fruity. I'm going to see what that did. I'm going to try it as well. Um, you know, this is classic Napa Valley Cab. I mean, if you're drinking duck horn and frog sleep and silver oak and camus, um, you're going to probably like this wine. And as a matter of fact, I give John Anthony good credit here. Though the oak monster is present, there is some actual structure behind this wine. I do get a little black tea leaf kind of component on the back end, which I adore, so that's going to make me like this wine a little bit better. But all in all, um, ooh, you stream. I think it might be down. Um, all in all, a, a wine that I think brings a very interesting balance of good new world factors and a little bit of the old world, and that's saving it for me a little bit. I'm gonna go 89 points on this wine. I think it's okay. Um, it doesn't kill me. It's not the best wine I've ever had, but it's not the worst version of a Napa Valley Cab. It's just that 50 bones, I just think there's other ways to go out there. I think John Anthony, 
has made some really good wine. So I'm, I, I'm not disappointed with this effort. I just definitely think that there's a lot of ways to do this style a little bit better. Hence uh, some of the Medoc wines or some of the people that are chilling with the oak. I just think that doing a two, three, four year program instead of all this new French oak would help a lot of producers in California. Um, so the oak is coming through a little bit. There's clearly cherry. I do like the raspberry jam, like natural raspberry, organic natural raspberry jam components that are going on with this wine. It's not a bad effort, it's just not sensational either. Um, once again, I'm gonna go back to the white wine real quick. Um, straight, you get, to, uh, you get to ask the question of the day. So uh, ask the Vayner Nation the question of the day. Um, oh man, I don't have a question of Well, the day. don't be scared, make up anything. This could be about Tennessee, it could be about design, it could be about wine. You can do whatever the hell you want. It does not have to be a wine question. Does not have to be a wine question. Go! All right, uh, Vayner Nation, what is the rubber and tires capital of Argentina? Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, what is your favorite designer? Um, for those of you that are graphic designers out there, who do you look to as a graphic design inspiration? Do you know Dan Cederholm? Great I do question. Know Dan Cederholm. He's awesome, right? He is pretty awesome. I love him. He designed. Wine Library TV and the uh, Wine Library TV logo. Ooh, nice. He's the man. He is the man. Who's your favorite designer? Let's throw architects in there and like an artist as well. What do you think? Frank Lloyd Wright. That's yours, Mott? That's such a bullcrap answer, Frank Lloyd Wright. Chattanooga has a Frank Lloyd Wright house. It's, You've been it's there, Mott? It's pretty smooth. You get crazy like that. Sometimes you take these one-day vacations and I'm like, Mott, where are you? You're like, I'm in Chattanooga, Frank Lloyd Wright. You have to come down and check out our wine over water thing on there. I will. What a crazy I bridge will. that we have down I know. there. It's, uh, this white it's wine smooth. dominates. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.